In this After Effects tutorial from PremiumBeat.com, we're going to create a 3D mosaic break apart and come together of a logo, or really anything. It's going to be using the Card Dance plugin and a couple of other things to shore it up, so let's get into it. So inside of After Effects, the first thing we're going to do is create a new composition. And in this case, we're going to use the HDTV 1080 24 frames a second preset. And we'll set the duration to 30 seconds, even though we won't use all of it. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a placeholder for the logos or the elements that you're going to break apart using the mosaic effect. For this case, we'll just make a new text layer. And we'll just type in logo and we're going to use sort of a gold brown color and we'll shrink it down so that it, it fits more or less towards the center and we can use the align panel to put it right in the middle. Now on the logo we might dress this up with a drop shadow just to give it a bit more visual interest so we'll give it a white drop shadow set its opacity to 100 put up the distance to about 15 and then we'll also go into the character palette here and we'll add a stroke to it. So this will serve as the logo logo for the piece and what we'll do is we will pre-compose this so control shift C and make sure you have move all attributes to new composition we will call this the logo comp and all of the things that we do are going to happen to this logo comp and if you need to change anything you just go inside and change it so comp 1 out here should be renamed final export because this is where things will be exported from. Now the next layer we have to make is a control layer. So we're going to make a new solid and we'll make it the comp size and we can set it as white or black or it doesn't really matter because we're going to cover it up using fractal noise. Now fractal noise will generate this nice sort of cloud pattern and you can change the fractal type and the noise type and all sorts of things, but for our purposes, what we're really interested in is increasing the contrast a little bit, perhaps to uh, 150, and you can tweak the brightness if need be, but I think we'll leave it pretty much as is. We just want to make sure that you can see pure black spots and pure white spots, and that there is considerable amount of change going on throughout because this layer is going to control what happens in the next part. First thing to do is pre-compose this so control shift C again or command shift C and call this the control comp and we would like to move all attributes into the new composition so the fractal noise we created stays on that solid and goes into the composition and hit OK. And you can drag this below the logo comp or just poke its eye out because we don't need to look at it. Now on the logo comp we are going to use something called the card dance. And the card dance basically will break up this layer into a bunch of small cards and then it will animate them using another layer. So we have to say gradient layer 1 is now the control comp and that means it will be using that gradient and that fractal noise that we put on there and then multiplying the values underneath the card and using that to generate position and rotation changes in those cards. So the first thing we want to do is change the rows and columns of these cards. This will divide the layer up into various rows and columns in order to make the cards. So we would like 90 rows and 160 columns. So we're dividing its height here into 90 pieces and we're dividing the width into 160. Since this is a 16 by 9 composition, that'll divide it up into squares. Now when we go down here to the Z position and we say use the source's intensity, you can see that it starts to fragment apart into a bunch of little squares. And as you increase the multiplier, they start to go all over the place. So let's set the multiplier at 25 and we'll set a keyframe here at the beginning for it to be at 25 and we'll move ahead 30 frames by holding down shift and page down and then we'll set the multiplier down to zero so the layer kind of collects itself together out of all of these pieces now we can also put in similar things for the x and y position as well so we'll go back to the beginning here and we'll set keyframe for those so we'll set the uh, multiplier here for the x position to be at 25 as well and we will set the multiplier for the y position to be at 25 as well and then we'll set the source to be intensity 1 for both and you can see it spreads them out quite nicely and you'll probably need to refine this just to make it a little bit more cohesive so that it isn't going all over the place so these don't have to be as extreme because we are going to also add movement using a camera. So let's just call up those keyframes by hitting U 
and then advancing to where they should all come together and making sure they're all at zero and we can see how that all comes together. We're going to want to easy ease them all into their end state just so it doesn't happen so abruptly and now we're going to create a new camera to add more motion and we're going to use the 24 millimeter preset hit OK and go into the logo comp here and we're going to have to tell it to use the camera that is in the comp. So it has built-in camera controls, but we would like to use the Compositions camera to move things around. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this camera and we're going to transform its position. So we know its final position should be here, so we'll set a keyframe. And before we animate it, we want to go Layer, Transform, Auto-Orient, and remove its auto-orientation towards its point of interest. It causes too much confusion when you start moving the position, but it's still locked at staring at a fixed point that doesn't actually move as well. So now move back to the beginning, and we'll just push the camera forward through this mass of particles until it reaches a point where there are no particles, or there are so few that it doesn't really matter. And then we'll also easy ease that last keyframe so that it's pulling out as it's coming together. So that looks pretty good. And we'd also like to add a rotation. So put a keyframe for the Z rotation or Z rotation. Go back to the beginning and we will just induce perhaps uh, 180 or 90 rotation there. So it spins as it comes out. And again, easy easing that last keyframe. So we have the logo coming out and coming together quite nicely. In order to add a motion blur to this though, we have to force it to have motion blur. So type in force motion blur on the effects and then drag that out onto the composition. And what this does is it overrides any native motion blurs because this effect actually can't have normal motion blur applied to it. In fact, it doesn't believe the layer is moving at all, and if you tried to apply motion blur to it, it doesn't believe there's any vectors for it to apply. So that brings the logo together. We're going to advance a few frames as long as you want to have it on. And now to remove the logo, we're going to simply keyframe the position, the rotation, and those multipliers again, and move ahead only 10 frames. And now we're going to set all of these up to be 25, so it's fragmenting apart, and we are going to go in at negative 180 on the Z rotation, and we are going to push back in using the camera's position. So at around 50, it's all gone. That's good. So we can see when it gets ready to break itself apart, it'll look kind of like everything's flying at the camera in some kind of vortex. So. That's working out for me. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll take these inside keyframes here of the camera's movement and we will just turn them into auto beziers, which means that these keyframes here in the middle are going to be the result of a tween between the two on the edge, just so it has continuous motion and isn't so boring. Now the last thing to do is to just take these layers and style them a little bit. So we'll make a new solid that will serve as the background. Set it to whatever color of gray you think is important. But uh, we're going to use a ramp on that. And what I like to do is use a radial ramp, move the inside to be close to the middle, and move the outside to be beyond the corner. Set the end color to be something dark, like 5. And set the inside color to be something a little bit lighter, like 25. Now we can apply a drop shadow to this layer here, and we will set it to be at a distance of 25 and a softness of 25. And we'll just put the motion blur below that. And you might have to amp up its opacity so you can see it a little better, but there it is. And now what we'll also be doing is we'll be adding an alpha bevel. So bevel alpha, again, put that above the drop shadow and set it to a value of 4. Now what this does is it appears that the shadow is being cast on the background so instead of it looking like we're pushing a camera through something it's more like these are coming from behind the camera or materializing in some way. So that shadow just helps to ground the image. And that's about it. You can do this for example on this text placeholder and then if someone comes around with a logo they would prefer you to use you can just go in and place it in the comp. Now what you can do is also change it, and just to show you what it looks like when you change things, I will put in this 
I will put in a star here that has rather ridiculous colors. Just scale that down and remove the logo we originally made. And so now you can see that it works for just about anything that you put in there. So this has been Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, your source for royalty-free sound effects and music. If you want to learn more about After Effects or other applications, stop by the blog. There's plenty of other tutorials and tips and tricks from industry experts there. And as always, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.